Welcome to the 12th of 13 SPSS video tutorials accompanying the first edition of the text Introduction to Statistics for Social Sciences. We will be using IBM SPSS Statistics version 19 for this tutorial. If you are running a different version of the software, you may notice some slight differences. In this tutorial, we will show you how to obtain Pearson's correlation coefficient and conduct a simple bivariate regression analysis. For this tutorial, you will need the file Chapter 12 Video Tutorial Data.sav. This dataset consists of the two ratio level variables, games and penalties. Suppose you are interested in the relationship between the number of games a professional hockey player plays and the number of penalty minutes they receive. To create your dataset, you randomly select 25 players from a database of player statistics. You create the variable games to represent the number of games the individual played, and the variable penalties to represent the total number of penalty minutes the player served. Now suppose you want to test your hypothesis that there is a relationship between games played and number of penalty minutes. To test this hypothesis using Pearson's correlation coefficient, we start by going to Analyze, Correlate, and then bivariate. In the bivariate correlations window, you will notice that there are three types of correlation coefficients available, and that by default, SPSS checked the Pearson correlation coefficient. We are also provided with the option for either two-tailed or one-tailed tests of significance. Since we have a two-tailed hypothesis, we will keep the two-tailed default option. From here, to obtain the correlation coefficient, we simply move the variables we are interested in to the variables box and then press OK. In the output window, we are then provided with the correlation matrix. We can read this output as either penalties by games or games by penalties. If we look at the correlation between the two variables, we see that the Pearson correlation coefficient is 0.484 with a two-tailed p-value of 0.014. Therefore, if we were using an alpha value of 0.05, we would reject the null and conclude that there is a positive association between these two variables. However, if we were to use an alpha value of 0.01, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the association between these two variables is not significant. Now that we have covered correlation, let's examine how to conduct a bivariate regression. Suppose we hypothesize that the number of games played was a positive predictor of the number of penalty minutes served. To test this hypothesis using a bivariate linear regression, we start by going to Analyze, Regression, and then Linear. There are many options available in the linear regression window. However, we will just focus on the ones needed for this tutorial. First, to define the variable penalties as the dependent variable, we move it to the box labeled dependent. Next, we move our independent variable games to the box labeled independent. Then, we'll push the statistics option button and select the descriptives option to obtain descriptive statistics. We then press continue and then OK to obtain the output. In the output we are provided with more information than we are able to cover here. So we will just focus on the output that corresponds to the information covered in the textbook. In the first table we are provided with the information regarding the mean, standard deviation and sample size for each variable. In the second table called model summary we are given the Pearson correlation coefficient, or R, and the coefficient of determination, which is R squared. Looking at the value for R squared, we can say that approximately 23.4% of the variance in penalty minutes is explained by the number of games played. We will skip the third table containing the ANOVA results, as we do not discuss this in the textbook. 
However, essentially, the ANOVA table provides us with information regarding the amount of variance explained by our regression line in comparison to the amount of variance explained by the residuals. The final table provides us with the unstandardized beta coefficients, the standardized beta coefficients, the test statistic, which is the t-value, and the p-value associated with the test statistic. Looking at the unstandardized beta coefficient, we can see that a one unit increase in the number of games played corresponds to a 0 0.479 increase in number of penalty minutes. Stated another way, each one additional game played corresponds to 0.479 of one minute or almost 30 seconds of additional penalty minutes. Similarly, by looking at the standardized results, a one standard deviation increase in the number of games played corresponds to an increase of 0 0.484 of one standard deviation of penalty minutes, meaning each 17.868 games played, which is the standard deviation for games, corresponds to an increase in penalty minutes of 0 0.484 times 17.692 which is the standard deviation for penalties, or roughly 8 minutes and 30 seconds in penalties. If we were to round off the standardized results to avoid speaking in decimals, we could say that each 18 games played corresponds to roughly 8 minutes and 30 seconds of penalties. Finally, we can see that the p-value associated with the test statistic, meaning the t-value, is 0.014. Therefore, if we were to use an alpha value of 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis that the slope of the regression line equals zero and conclude that based on this sample, the number of games played is a positive predictor of the number of penalty minutes served. This brings us to the end of the SPSS tutorial for Chapter 12. We hope that you have found this tutorial to be useful. In the next and final tutorial, we will examine how to use SPSS to conduct the Pearson's Chi-Square Test of Independence.